Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now answering a question from one of the Solomon papers. This is um, Solomon I, question number two, which is actually question 14. Sorry, question number 11 from my end of topic worksheet number four, which is on probability. And this question is um, about the events A and B, which are independent. And we're told that the probability of A is twice the probability of B. And the probability of A intersection B is one over eight. Show that the probability of B is equal to a quarter. Okay, so now what we have here is um, we're told that the probability of A and B are independent. Now that, that should give us the information or the idea that the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B will equal the probability of A into section B. Okay, that's only true if the events are independent, which basically means that the probability of B occurring is not affected by the probability of A having occurred before it. Right? So they're independent of each other. One doesn't affect the probability of the other. So that's what the probability of A in section B is equal to. The probability of A times the probability of B. Why do we know that? Because they are independent. Right? And we know the probability of A is two times the probability of B. Show that the probability of B is equal to a quarter. So now, what we can do from here, we can say that this means that the probability of A times the probability of B is equal to the probability of A in section B, which is 1 over 8. And because we want to find or show the probability of B, I can use some sort of substitution. I can replace the probability of A with 2 times the probability of B. So this will be 2 times the probability of B times the probability of B again is equal to 1 over 8. So I can simply just multiply these together. That will be 2 times the probability of B, you can say squared, is equal to 1 over 8. So therefore, I can say that the probability of B, all squared, is equal to, if I divide both sides by 2, I get 1 over 16. And therefore, we can say the probability of B is equal to the square root of 1 over 16, which is a quarter. It can't be negative a quarter. Probability can't be negative. So even though we're putting the square root sign ourselves there, and it's possible for us to have a positive or negative answer, of course, we cannot have a negative probability. So the answer is 1 over 4. So there's the answer to part a of this question the probability of b is equal to 1 over 4 all right so now we got to go to part b so we got to find the probability of a union b so let's just write down what we have now we know the probability of uh, b is equal to a quarter we were asked to show that so even if we didn't get it we can still use it in part b and we're also told that the probability of a in section b is a quarter uh, sorry is 1 8 sorry and we're also told that the probability of um, a is twice the probability of B. We also told the probability of A is twice the probability of B. And we got to use this information to find the probability of A union B. So what I really like to do in these type of questions is to draw Venn diagrams. It really helps to picture what's happening here. And that's why knowing Venn diagrams and how to do the shadings for them is really important in this topic. So have A and B. Now, what we know is the intersection here is 1 over 8. We also know that the probability of B is 1 quarter, okay? And therefore, the probability of A is 2 times two times 1 quarter, which is a half, all right? Because the probability of A is 2 times the probability of B. So when the probability of A is equal to a half. So we want to find the probability of A union B. So basically, we can say the probability of A union B is the probability of all of A, okay, which is all of this circle here, plus the probability of all of B, which is all of this circle here, which we know both of them now. And if you take away from that the probability of the intersection between A and B, which is this part, because when we did probability of A, we counted it once. When we did probability of B, we counted it a second time. So you've got to take it away. That way, that will be only counted once now. So we have all that information here now, don't we? We have probability of A is uh, 1 over 2. The probability of B is 1 over 4, and the probability of A in section B is 1 over 8. So if, we've, if we work this out, we get our answer. We can express them all over 8. Okay, so this is going to be 4 over 8, okay, plus 2 over 8 minus 1 over 8. That's 7, that's 6 over 8 minus 1 over 8, that's 5 over 8. So we can say the probability of A union B is equal to 5 over 8. Okay, so that's the whole thing there. So we can 
um, you know, now continue to answer other questions. If we want to, we can start filling in these blanks and that might actually be useful. So I'm going to copy this and bring it down. It might be useful for us to fill in these blanks to answer, say, this last part of the question. So I'll move this over here. All right, and we can start filling in these blanks. And that might help us. So we can say, for example, we know the probability of A is um, a half. So the whole thing here is a half. So this is going to be, uh, this section here alone is going to be um, a half minus 1 over 8, which is 4 over 8 minus 1 over 8, which is, this is 3 over 8. And we know the probability of all of B is um, a quarter. Okay, uh, a quarter. All right, so all of this is a quarter. So the part, this part here is going to be a quarter minus 1 over 8, which is going to be, this is going to be 2 over 8 minus 1 over 8, which is 1 over 8. Okay, if you add these together, you get 2 over 8. It's a quarter, that's right. So that's the probability of what's inside the two circles. We can also work out the probability of what's outside everything as well, if you want to here. This is going to be this section here. So altogether, the probability of A union B Okay, as we said, it's 5 over 8, which this shows very clearly. 3 plus 1 plus 1, that's 5 over 8. So outside is 3 over 8. Okay, because the whole thing adds up to 1. Now, that should help us answering any other question we need. So we want to find the probability of A given B complement. Now, what does that mean? Now, B complement means this is, our, if it says given, this is conditional probability. It means we have changed our solution set from the whole you know, um, universal set to limiting to a part of it, the part that's after this slash. So A given B complement means B complement is our solution set. So we're only looking at the parts which are outside of B, which is this part and that part. That is our sample set. That's our denominator. Okay, so B complement, everything outside of B, okay, which is basically, um, we know the probability of B is a quarter, it's three quarters, okay, which is what we can see, six over four. So that is our sample set, okay? So we can say here that our sample set is B complement, all right? So we, we can say the probability of B complement is equal to th uh, three quarters. It's this plus this, right? And we want to find the probability that A, the probability of A given B complement, so only the part of A which is outside of B, okay? is what we can count. Only the part of A which is in our sample set. So we can't count any of these now. In this, we can't count any of this inside these, this B. Everything has to be outside of B. So here, we want to find the probability that that thing is in A as well as outside of B. Okay, and, you know, uh, given that our sample set is all the things outside of B. So it's basically going to be 3 eighths. The probability of A given B complement is going to be 3 over 8 over okay six over eight or three quarters we could say okay i'll leave that six over eight for now it makes it easier so you have three over eight divided by six over eight which is three over eight times eight over six they cancel out so you're left with a half so the probability of a given a a given b complement is equal to a half okay you can also do this purely algebraically by just saying the probability of a given b complement is the probability of the intersection between A and B complement okay, over the probability of B complement. All right, which is exactly what we just did basically here. A intersection B complement, okay, sorry, that should be outside. A intersection B complement, not in the bracket, okay, just that section there, which is three over eight divided by probability of B complement, which is going to be um, 6 over 8. So it's exactly the same thing. You, of course, it's going to give you a half again. So that's just using the formula. Well, this is using the Venn diagram, all right, which I much prefer to do. Okay, so there we have the answer to this question. Uh, question number 2 from this um, Solomon paper, 11 from my end of topic worksheet on S1. I hope that was clear. Thank you for watching. Other questions from Solomon I paper can be found in the playlist over here. Other questions from this worksheet of probability can be found in the um, playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link on this section here. 
And you can see other questions to do with probability in general from S1 will be found in the playlist that's in this section. Thank you for watching and see you soon.